Alright, what's up, Mother Truckers? BP Hero back at you. And we're finally here. It's finally time to do it. We're trying to grind for the month of July. Shooting for daily uploads, don't know if we'll get there, but the goal is to do minimum 20 videos between regular videos and shorts. So I figured what a better way to get this video done that I've been talking about doing for probably three years now. The basics of pitching. Now I'm not saying that I'm some kind of conference level pitcher or I'm some crazy, you know, cracked out pitcher or anything like that, but I've done my fair share of pitching and I've won uh, my fair share of tournaments. Uh, doing this job here. So I feel like I've at least learned enough to be able to pass on you guys the basics to get you started if you want to be a pitcher or if you just want to improve on your craft, maybe you'll pick up something here that you can use. That's the goal, so let's get started with the first one. Now the first one here is going to be you need protection. You need a pitcher's mask. There's a few different options here. You got your basic fielder's mask that is going to protect basically nothing but your face. Then your second option is going to be something like I use, which is a Worth Pitcher's Helmet. Now this is going to cover the top of your head, it's going to cover the front of your face, it's going to cover your jawline and the side of your head and everything like that. Still leaves you a little bit exposed, but that's the go-to option for a lot of people. And your third option is going to be something like a lacrosse style mask, something like that, that will be lightweight, something for you to move in. I know it's a really popular option, but the big thing that I will say with that is don't go cutting bars out of them. It's like cutting a structure out of your car. When you get in an accident, you don't have that structure there. Same thing with those bars and the mask. If the manufacturer thought it was a bad idea to put them there and rarely thought you wouldn't be able to see with them, they wouldn't put them there. So it's just kind of food for thought. More than likely, nothing's going to happen. So if I uh, take a ball off the mask and I've got bars cut out of it and the mask is now compromised because of the bars I cut out, was it really worth being able to see? What's the point of having a mask on? You know, kind of that thing. But my option, if I was going to go pitch competitive ball tomorrow, would be a full face catcher's mask. It's going to cover basically everything. It's bent for diamond sports. It's going to take all the shocks and blows you want it to. That is my option, but in my opinion, that is the play. All right, so up next is going to be getting yourself a good glove. $150 to buy you a hell of a glove these days. So that would be my suggestion, something in that price range. You don't have to go out and spend, you know, $350 on some kind of custom glove or some kind of crazy top of the line glove. If you see something good that's not worn out, the old trusty from high school, probably got a few too many miles on it to be out here pitching. You don't want the end of it to be all floppy and worn out. You need good padding for your hand. Get yourself a good glove, at least 13 inches, give you plenty of room to go out, reach for stuff. And you gotta be able to protect your hand too, so you don't want something that's gonna be all worn out with the padding wise. A good glove is a great investment as a pitcher, especially somebody getting started. Get yourself something nice and it'll last you a good long while. I've had this one for almost 12 years and Honestly, the only reason I don't use it anymore is because it used to be red and now it's freaking pink. All right, so up next is shin guards. You gotta take care of these things, your legs. Because I'm telling you right now, personal experience, getting smoked in the leg and having some big nasty knot and all the, the bruising and the blood run down in your leg, not good news, we don't want that. You got a few different options. You got stuff that's made specifically for slow pitch. I know Easton makes some that are available at Headbanger Sports. Guys wear baseball style. There's even the kind that like slide completely up on your leg and you can wear them all day. There's a million different options, but you got to have something out there to protect your legs. You see them in tournament settings in almost every level these days. So that's also uh, another thing for protection that, while considered extra, is still something that I would highly recommend. All right, so now that we got protection out of the way, let's talk about a little bit of the basics here. The first one is going to be the grip. I see a lot of people just, I guess out of instinct, maybe want to grip a ball like this with their two fingers across these two seams. And if you aren't perfectly straight back and then perfectly followed through, what this is going to do is cause your ball to hook. It's going to cause it to turn and run. We want the ball to go straight up and then straight back down. Best way to do that, get yourself a four seam grip on the ball, like so, center it on the seams, and then just cut her loose. We want it tumbling in for end the best way to make sure we're throwing strikes. This thing is tumbling in for end. It can only go straight up and straight back down. All right, so we got the grip out of the way. Now let's talk about how to release this thing. And the big thing is going to be making sure that we've got our four string grip, like I talked about. And then we want to pull straight back. I'm pulling straight back and I'm going to come straight through. I'm pulling straight back and I'm coming straight through. Because if I've got this grip and I'm pulling straight back, look at my arm motion. I'm here and now I'm here. It's straight. I got my seam straight, my arm motion straight. The ball has no choice but to go straight up and straight back down. And when it, it comes to it comes to coming back here, that's the big one. But when we need to make sure we're coming through and we're following through, 
you want to follow through and come straight through. If I come through, I see a lot of people really struggle with wanting to throw across their body. So I'm going to pull back. And if I'm coming out and I'm throwing across my body, look at my seams now. My seams are sideways. The ball's going to want to turn. It's not going to be consistent up and down motion. So we need to make sure we're going straight back and straight through. So, you know, just kind of giving an illustration here. We want to make sure that we're carrying momentum. The easiest way to do that with our footwork is to put our foot on the rubber and then step into the pitch all day. We got strikes all day long. That's going to be a big one for and making sure you're going straight up and down, making sure you're kind of carrying a little momentum into your pitch. It's going to help you a ton with throwing strikes because the easier we can make this motion, the more consistent we'll be with being able to throw strikes. All right, so up next is going to be understanding your strike zone. Every sanction, every league, and every tournament is going to have something different. So I'm not going to get too far into what has what because it's just going to create confusion because at the end of the day, it's the director's discretion. So that's one thing that you need to understand is your strike zone. You need to understand what's a strike so you know how to throw it. Now that we have our good grip down and we have our good release down, now we can focus on being consistent and throwing strikes. But if we don't understand what's a strike, then all of that is for naught. So understanding your strike zone is one of the biggest basics to pitching because we got to be able to throw the same strike every single time and understanding it makes all the difference. All right, so you're almost dangerous. You got your gear, you got your basics. What else do you need? Well, you need a mindset. And the big thing with mindset, I almost made this number one and number two, is be prepared for every ball to be hit back at you. The one time you get caught sleeping is the one time you're going to get hit. You see, so many people want to throw a pitch and then just stand here with their arms at their sides, not ready to do anything besides get blasted. And it's going to happen. It's going to happen. The one time you take a playoff and you don't think you need to, you're going to get hit. So even if it's just get yourself set, throw the ball, and then just put your glove up. At least you're ready. You're not just standing here like this. Now, me, when I pitch, especially if I'm pitching competitive, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw my pitch, and then I'm going to fall off, and I'm going to get myself ready. You know, I can do the same thing. I can pitch, fall off, get myself ready. Always be ready to feel the ball. I don't care if it's a mile outside, a mile inside. The batter looks like he might not swing. Be ready for a ball to be hit back at you every time one comes out of your hand. All right, so the next one here with mindset is going to be being able to throw strikes on command. Keep that in your head at all times until you can figure out how to throw a strike damn near every time you let a ball go out of your hand. There is no reason to be trying to throw any cute little knuckleball, something with some side spin. I don't want you out here doing all kinds of crazy pump faking and stuff. You need to work on throwing strikes and make sure that that's damn near what you can do with every pitch before we work on getting fancy. Because the one thing we're going to do, getting ourselves in trouble, we try and nibble with one, we try and get cute and pump fake with another because we're playing you trip and pump faking is so much fun. Well, guess what? You just threw one bad pitch. You're trying to pump fake to be cute because you're playing you trip and that's what you do. You know, it's almost like a rite of passage to pump fake and you trip. You don't have to, but until you can throw strikes on command, I don't want to see any knuckleballs. I don't want to see any kind of cute little curveballs. I don't want to see any pump faking. I don't want to see any kind of little shenanigans to mess with the batter. Throw strikes. All right, so the last one with mindset is going to be making sure you understand that you're going to have to let them hit the ball. You're not Justin Verlander. You're not Randy Johnson. You're not going to throw seven innings with two earned runs and have 10 strikeouts in one walk. It's just not going to happen that way. You're playing slow pitch softball. You're throwing this underhand so somebody can hit it. You're going to have to let them hit it. Now, does that mean throw biscuits and let them just tee off? No, but you have to understand that you're going to have to throw strikes. So don't try and get cute, trying to hit a certain spot, trying to make sure, you know, this guy can't hit a home run or he can't pull the ball or he can't hit it to you know, this person that might not feel the ball very good. You can't worry about that stuff. That's, that's somebody else's problem. If somebody's not feeling the ball great, that's their problem, not yours. You have to let them hit this ball. It, the worst thing you can do is try and hit spots, try and be, you know, cute, trying to hit little spots here, little spots there, nibble, nibble, nibble. Well, now you've walked somebody, you're in trouble, or you got your back against the wall, and now you need a strike, so the pressure's on. You have to understand they are going to hit the ball. I know I keep saying that, but that's how much I mean it. Now, as far as working inside, outside, you know, pitching approaches and maybe a pattern of pitches, that's something we'll work on in a different video. But the big takeaway here is you have to let them hit this ball. No matter what, you're not going to strike everybody out. So you got to give them something to hit, even if you don't want to. Trust me, I've been there. Bases are loaded. You got a guy up that's hit freaking three home runs already this game. And guess what? You don't have anywhere to put him. You got to pitch to him. You're going to have to let him hit it. You got to let him get himself out. 
if you don't let him get himself out or even give them the opportunity to, you're never going to know. So you have to be able to throw strikes and let them hit this ball. All right, so the basics of pitching with the BP Hero. This is going to be level one. I'm going to try and do a three-part series here. I'm not going to allude to what's coming with the others because I don't know for sure. i got a plan. Whether the plan comes together or not, who knows. But this should be enough to get you started, whether you want to start pitching for your league team, whether you're a pitcher already, and you're just looking to add some things to the repertoire or some ideas or kind of concepts to apply. I hope whatever it is you're doing with the pitching, this helps you. Because that's what this video is for. I'm glad I'm getting this done. It's taken me way too long to do this stuff. But here we are getting it done for you. So I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope it was helpful. That's it for now. Swing hard in case you hit it. Be here. I'll catch you next time.